I love this time of year. Family, football, Sunday fun days, and cheesesteaks. It's just what we do here. And you all know how much I love hosting and entertaining, but ribeyes for a crowd can get expensive. Plus, everyone always brings goodies to the hangout to add to the table, so switching out from cheesesteaks that can fill everyone up to a cheesesteak dip is perfect for feeding a crowd. Plus, doesn't everyone love a good party dip? Since I'm going family style size, this recipe is doubled. I've got two 12 ounce packs of thinly shaved ribeye steak, two containers of whipped cream cheese, and deli sliced provolone and Cooper Sharp American cheese. Now, cheesesteaks with or with onions is a must for me. They add the perfect flavor to our cheesesteaks without overpowering the taste of our ribeye. Here in Philadelphia, traditional cheesesteaks are not served with bell peppers cooked with the meat. However, if you do ask for peppers when ordering a cheesesteak, you're gonna get asked whether you want hot or sweet, and you're gonna end up getting a pickled hot or sweet pepper. Bell peppers can really overpower the taste of the cheesesteak, and the reason why we serve them with a pickled pepper is to cut the richness of the cheesesteak. So be sure to try it just like this and let me know what you guys think. Now let's get this dip going. I turn my blackstone on low, allowing it to heat up. I'll dice one sweet onion, drop that into some neutral oil. I'm using vegetable, toss it to coat evenly, adding some salt and pepper, and spread spreading these out. That oil will pick up all of the flavor from the onions as these slowly soften the cook. They just need a couple minutes, then we'll slide them aside, keeping that flavored oil behind. That's what I want to drop my shaved ribeye into. And just like any cheesesteak, use a spatula in one hand and either a second one in the other or a scraper is perfect. Using the two to break apart the meat into small pieces as it's cooking, once it's cooked through or no longer red or pink, add in our onions to mix through. And now is when we can season with just some simple salt and pepper. Waiting to salt until now is gonna keep this meat nice and juicy. I'm also gonna add a little of the Blackstone cheesesteak seasoning because this stuff is so delicious. Give it a quick toss and then top it with some of our Cooper Sharp American cheese. A little drizzle of water around the pile of our meat creates steam to help our cheese quickly melt. We toss to get that creamy melty cheese all throughout. Into a large mixing bowl goes our whipped cream cheese, three nice sized scoops of Duke's mayo, and I'm gonna add a tablespoon of garlic paste and season all that with a little bit more of our cheesesteak seasoning. I'll add some of that vinegary brine from our jar of peppers and then add in half of our cheesy ribeye to mix throughout. I want to lightly oil my skillet and add half of our dip mixture. This is what we'll be baking our dip in. Now this dip is a great make ahead. You can bring it to a party, stick it in an oven, or even stick it in the pizza oven to warm through and get nice and brown on top. I'm using my Blackstone skillet, so I'll lightly oil it so nothing sticks, and then add in half of our dip mixture. Topping that with some sliced provolone and half of our meat that we've reserved. Add the rest of our dip on top, a quick dusting with our cheesesteak seasoning, and then add the rest of our meat. I'm topping that with some sliced provolone to cover, half of our meat that we reserved, and then adding the rest of our dip to spread out and dusting that with our cheesesteak seasoning. We'll top it off with the rest of our meat, and now I'll take a stack of our Cooper Sharp cheese, dice that small, then roll a stack of our provolone and slice it. We'll take all this delicious cheese and spread it across the top, adding a little extra dusting of our cheesesteak seasoning, a drizzle all over of that vinegary pepper brine, along with some of those peppers. I'm going for a little bit of the red cherry peppers and a little bit of those pickled green peppers, and it's ready and done to bring to game day. You can, again, heat this in your pizza oven or in a regular kitchen oven at about 350 for maybe 25, 30 minutes, or until the cheese gets melty throughout and the cheese on top gets this nice brown toasty color, which is my daughter's favorite part of this dip. She steals all of that toasty cheese. Now I love serving this with Tostitos and sometimes even some sliced bread like a baguette or Italian bread. So what do you guys think? Is it gonna make it to your next game day? Okay, if you guys know me, you know I love chicken wings and they've gotta be super crispy, crunchy on the outside with a fall off the bone, juicy, tender, moist chicken on the inside. This E-Series air fryer 
is magical. I always start off with fresh, never frozen chicken wings. Drizzle them to coat thinly and evenly with some oil. Today I'm using avocado oil, then season them up with just a little salt, a big heaping tablespoon or two of baking powder. This is gonna help us get that super crispy, bubbly skin. And I only did a little bit of salt because I am going with the Blackstone cheesesteak seasoning. This is one of my favorites for chicken wings. We give that a hefty dusting all over these to coat and season. We'll line up all of our chicken wings across this, which I love that this holds just under four pounds of chicken wings without any crowding. This way everything cooks nice and evenly. This E-Series oven comes with preset temperatures and times. So once you turn it on, all you have to do is pick whether you're cooking a fresh pizza, frozen pizza, you're baking, or you're using it as an air fryer. You can adjust the time and temperature as needed. I'm gonna bump this up to 26 minutes. We're rolling at 400 degrees. Once preheated, it will tell you to add your food, which now we can slide in our air fryer basket full of chicken wings and allow this to rotate and spin and do its magic and cook. We'll check this every five to 10 minutes. Halfway through, I can see that this skin is already bubbling, rendering out its fat nice and slowly, turning this skin so crispy and crunchy. Because I do like my chicken wings well done, extra crispy, I add some more minutes to this, allow them to go just a little bit longer, although I can already see that these are done and ready to come out. Once they're to my liking, I'm gonna pull these out, plate these up. I always serve cheesesteak chicken wings with some sliced up bell peppers. This E-Series is so fun. Not only perfect for my chicken wings, but I can't even tell you how many things we've used this for. Mashing up cheesesteaks and burgers and making cheese steak sliders on the Blackstone. These start off with fresh ground ribeye that I just ball up into two to three ounce balls. And then I have a large sweet onion that I'm just gonna dice up into the same size I would if I was making cheese steaks. I have uh, some white mushrooms that I'm just gonna slice up, set those both aside while I get ready my favorite buns that I use for all of my cheeseburgers. These are Martin's slider rolls. To these Martin slider buns, I'm just gonna slather on my favorite Duke's mayo. That way they are all ready for when I need them. Prep is key to making uh, quick burgers on the Blackstone since these are such a quick cook. While my Blackstone preheats, I'm going to make a little spicy ketchup. I love spicy ketchup on my cheesesteaks, so of course I add it to my cheesesteak sliders. To make this, you just make a mixture of ketchup and sriracha. Depending on how hot you like it, you add more sriracha. Um, and if you need to tone it down a little bit, add a little bit more ketchup. So I'm just gonna set that aside, that's for serving. Now I'm gonna drop down my onions and mushrooms and a little bit of uh, vegetable oil, let them cook low and slow until they char up perfectly. To my mushrooms and onions, I'm gonna add the Blackstone cheesesteak seasoning. This adds so much flavor, it's fabulous. So add that, mix that, and let them continue to cook. When they're just about done, I'm gonna slide them off to the side where my burner is off. So now I'm just gonna drop down my ribeye balls that I formed to right onto the hot black stone. To those, before I do anything, I'm gonna season them with the cheese steak seasoning and then give them just a little uh, smush down. I don't want to go too flat like a smash burger for this one. I want a little bit of thickness to it. I love um, the smash burger, but I also sometimes like a nice fat cheeseburger. For these, I am using the same cheese I do in my cheese steaks. This is fresh sliced provolone cheese and Cooper Sharp American cheese. I'm gonna do a slice each per uh, slider. So once I'm ready to flip them around, I'm gonna flip them and then I'm gonna add my cheese. I'm gonna top those with my onions and mushrooms to melt into that cheese. And once they are done, I'm gonna pull these off, put them onto my Martin rolls that I had my mayo on, serve it alongside that spicy ketchup, top them off with 
fresh Jewish pickles that I got out of the barrel and just sliced up. I'm going to put them on top, serve them up to my friends, my family, whoever wants to eat them. We love them. We enjoy them. They're really fun and it's a good switch up to eating cheesesteaks and burgers since we eat a lot of both. I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you guys post them for me to see, for everybody at Blackstone to see. So tag us, Blackstone Betty, tag Blackstone Products. Subscribe to our YouTube. Don't miss any of our recipes because I think they're pretty awesome. Time for a little cheesesteak 101. If you're looking to make a traditional cheesesteak, I'm Blackstone Betty from the Philly area. I'm going to show you guys how we make our cheesesteaks. The cheesesteak was created by hot dog vendor Pat Oliveri in South Philly in the 1930s. Simply beef, onions, and melty cheese on a good Italian roll is all you need. However, you can add whatever else you'd like to add to your steak sandwich. We eat these a couple times a week, being from the Philadelphia area, and the Blackstone makes these so easy, and I know it's always one of the first things any new griddle owner wants to make. Today, I'm sticking to tradition to show you the basic cheesesteak. From there, add whatever else you want. We need to get our griddle cleaned up first from last night's dinner, which I made teriyaki chicken and veggies with a store-bought sauce that left me a mess. So a little scrape and some water to steam clean or lift that mess off. Then we re-oil the entire surface to keep my seasoning even and smooth. Now on to a large sweet onion. A large or small dice both work here. Onions add a ton of flavor to our steak sandwich, so the size of your cut depends on what kind of bite you want. I'm always switching it up. Now, Cooper Sharp American Cheese from the deli is the best around. It melts better than anything else, regardless of whether you cut it small like this for easy distribution and a quick melt, or leave it in slices to melt over top of your meat, or like an older video that I showed you how I make a cheese sauce using Cooper Sharp cheese is another fun way to get your cheesesteaks nice and cheesy fast. In that same video, I showed you how to shave, chip, or slice ribeyes at home paper thin. Today, I picked up shaved ribeye ready to go. Paper thin is key. You can always ask your butcher to chip or shave steaks. Sirloin would be a more cost efficient choice and it's used in a lot of steak shops as well. Now, this is a quickie. Into some neutral oil, our onions go until tender and translucent. Not too fast, so I'm gonna cut my two middle burners off. One, because I'm filming myself, so I do need to give myself a little time to juggle the camera but I also don't want them to get crispy. We want them soft, but to still have a little bit of a bite. We season with salt and pepper, then slide these aside, keeping behind as much of that oil that the onions cooked in right in the center. If you don't have room on your griddle, just remove these, place them in a bowl, but you want that oil on your griddle to cook your steak in. Now my first burner is off, so my onions will stay there. My middle two are back on to medium, medium high heat. Down into that flavored oil goes our shaved steak. Now using two scrapers or spatulas, we start ripping and pulling apart our steak as it's cooking, picking up all of that onion flavor. The small pieces are gonna make for an easy bite when eating your sandwich. Once it's just about cooked completely, about 90% of the way done at least, we then season with salt and pepper, keeping it nice and simple, just the way a cheesesteak should be. The Blackstone cheesesteak seasoning is a fantastic addition. If you have some, dust that over as well. It's delicious. And now to our Cooper Sharp cheese all over the top. If you don't have this, Lando Lake Deli Slice American Cheese or Boar's Head American Cheese, which I also love, especially if I'm not near home, I'm at a state or on vacation and want to make steak sandwiches, either of those would be my next pick. Now we want our cheese melted throughout all of our meat, so give that a toss, allow it to melt throughout. Now I'm doing all three of my sandwiches with or with onions. So toss our onions through all of our meat, then separate into three different piles, lining them up. This way our rolls, which is to me the most important part of a good cheesesteak. You want a good Italian roll, not a bun. Lissio's is a favorite choice. You need something hard and chewy and strong on the outside to hold everything in. The inside should be soft and spongy almost to soak up all of the juices without falling apart like a hot dog bun would. 
Now these lay over the piles of meat, allowing the edges to just kiss the griddle slightly to soak in some of that flavor for a hot minute, then using one hand to hold the roll while sliding a spatula under all of that cheesy steak, we flip these over and look at the top layer, how the cheese and the steak caramelize on that first layer that was kissing the griddle. Everything underneath is just cheesy perfection. Now, when I worked in South Philly, friends had me hooked on adding a smear of mayo and ketchup to mine. My mom always served Jewish deli pickles out of the barrel with hers. Most popular would be pickled hot or sweet jarred peppers, which are the perfect addition. It's meant to cut the richness of the sandwich, so a bite of your rich cheesy steak sandwich, a bite of a pickled sweet or spicy pepper. And then there's those, not me or probably anybody from this area, that do like bell peppers on theirs. Whether it's traditional or a pizza steak or a cheesesteak hoagie, the possibilities of things to add to your cheesesteak are endless once you know how to make one. Beefy, cheesy, ooey gooey, mushrooms, peppers, onions, and pasta. Mm-hmm, that's right. I have my pot of water on my Blackstone that's already boiling. As it began to boil, I dropped in a big handful of salt to salt my water, kind of like um, the more salt, the better. That'll flavor our pasta for us. Um, and I showed you we're using the Barilla mini pasta. I love this for this recipe because it's nice and bite-sized. Therefore, I chopped up everything bite-sized. If I were to use a pasta like spaghetti or fettuccine or angel hair, then I would probably do strips with my peppers and onions. You just kind of want to match up your pasta shape to your vegetables. So let's start these vegetables before I drop down my pasta. So we're gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil on medium heat. We have our right burners on high boiling our water. We're gonna drop down a little bit of onions, peppers, and mushrooms and let them start to cook just a few minutes. After a few minutes, we're gonna slide these to the side and we're gonna drop down our ground beef. Trying to get some of that leftover oil from the peppers and onions under that beef, that way it flavors it with the onions and the peppers. Now I'm showing you guys this recipe using ground beef. You wanna get a ground beef that's a good quality, 80-20 uh, ground beef or a ground ribeye. I'm showing you with the ground beef versus uh, shaved ribeye because although that's available to me easily, it's not to a lot of you guys and I know that. So pick a good ground beef. Ribeye would be great, uh, but anything really will work for this. You could change it up to chicken if you want to. I just want to show you that no matter where you live, you can make a nice cheesesteak pasta. Once it's cooked through, we're gonna try to drain off some of that extra fat and oil left behind. Then we're gonna just add our vegetables back in. This is why we didn't cook them so long in the beginning because they're gonna cook, continue to cook now and get a little bit softer. Now we're gonna add in one quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. Now, as much as the boys all make fun of me for how I pronounce things, I'm gonna bet that I say that word better than all three of them. Betty, come on, we can all say that. Worcestershire. 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 I'm going with I say it the best, so that's just that. So now that we have our Worcestershire Oh, I just messed up. <laughs> so now that we have our Worcestershire so Now I can't say it again. Now that we have our Worcestershire sauce, I've ruined it for myself, jeez. Now that we have our Worcestershire sauce in there, we're gonna add in our chopped garlic cloves. Now we're gonna lay some of that provolone and that Cooper Sharp American cheese over this ground beef and vegetables. Let that start to melt. A little bit of uh, the pasta water helps it melt perfectly and it gives us some extra liquid. We're seasoning this with salt and pepper. We're adding our Blackstone cheesesteak seasoning all over the top. Be sure to check your pasta halfway through or a couple times to make sure that your pasta is not sticking to the bottom of your pot. Give it a nice mix, let that pasta move around. Once my pasta is al dente and done, I'm gonna add my pasta to this ground beef, cheesy ground beef and vegetables. It's okay if some of that pasta water gets into this mixture that just helps really loosen that cheese up 
First, we're gonna season this pasta off with some extra Blackstone cheesesteak seasoning, and then we're gonna mix everything to incorporate it, get that pasta nice and cheesy, add a little extra pasta water if you need to help loosen everything up. Now we're gonna take it off the Blackstone, plate it up, do one of CJ's post-dusting with the cheesesteak seasoning, and this is ready to devour. Just a few ingredients and it really goes a long way. Able to feed a family, a big family like mine, um, or make it for just yourself and have leftovers because it's so good. I know we all love cheesesteaks. I know we all love pasta. So I hope you guys try it and I hope you enjoy it just as much as we do. Who doesn't love a cheesy chicken cheesesteak hot off the Blackstone? I know it's one of my family's favorites, especially since we live right outside of Philadelphia. Cheesesteaks are a weekly must have. A traditional cheesesteak requires just a few simple ingredients. Starting with the rolls, we're using Amoroso Italian rolls. These are chewy on the inside and they can really hold up to all of the weight of a cheesy chicken cheese steak or traditional cheesesteak. Our cheese of choice is always going to be Cooper Sharp. I prefer to use tenders. This way our cheesesteak stays nice and juicy on the inside. A sweet Vidalia onion, salt and pepper, and a little oil and we're ready to rock and roll. We'll turn our Blackstone onto medium heat, dice up our sweet onion into a little neutral oil like vegetable oil. Allow these onions to fry up on medium heat until they start to get crispy and brown around the edges staying nice and translucent in the center. We season with a little salt and pepper then we remove these setting them aside leaving behind all of that onion flavored oil to cook either your sliced ribeye or your chicken. Our chicken tenders have a tendon in them we need to quickly remove. Very simple with the help of a fork and a paper towel you can slide these right out. Now my griddle is set to medium high to high heat. This is a quick fast moving cook. We drop down our tenders using a spatula and a scraper to easily chop this up just like we would our ribeye. The scraper really helps and the fact that we're using tenders makes these super tender to easily chop up. If you like your chicken cheesesteak chunky, you don't have to break it up as much. I like it nice and fine, so I go a little heavy on the chopping. Seasoning simply with salt and black pepper once our chicken is cooked, and you'll wanna do the same if you're using ribeye. And don't forget, you can go onto the Blackstone Products YouTube channel, subscribe there on YouTube. You can watch my traditional cheesesteak using fresh sliced or shaved ribeye. Now that's it, if you want a plain chicken cheese steak, you're ready to load up your rolls. We're doing chicken cheese steaks. So over the top in three separate piles, we'll do our first, a plain cheese steak, adding slices of our creamy Cooper Sharp cheese. This stuff is so creamy as it melts. So once it starts, give it a little mix. That way the cheese melts throughout all of that chicken. Then lay your roll right on top. This way the edges kiss the griddle. It steams just to slightly warm up your roll. Moving over to our next pile, we're gonna do a buffalo chicken cheesesteak, adding just a little bit of Sweet Baby Ray's mild wing sauce and a little bit of ranch. Give that a mix, add our Cooper Sharp again, and then give that a mix to melt that cheese throughout all of our chicken. Let that roll just ride right on top of our pile of meat. And our third chicken cheesesteak is gonna be a little Diablo cheesesteak, a little spicy with some Cento pickled cherry peppers, more creamy Cooper Sharp cheese. And it was at that moment that I realized I forgot to add all of my delicious fried onions. So we mix them in to each cheesesteak. There are so many different ways you can load up your chicken cheesesteak. Whether you wanna add some pepperoni, mushrooms, do a pizza loaded chicken cheesesteak, or a bacon ranch chicken cheesesteak, there are so many endless possibilities. Add your green bell peppers if you want to. Get crazy with how you load yours up. Once they're ready to pull off the Blackstone, we use one hand to hold our roll securely. In the other hand, we have our spatula that slides straight under all of that meat, flipping this 
this over. Now these are ready to serve and I cannot wait to dive into these. I'm going for the traditional chicken cheese steak. The only thing I'm adding to mine is a little smear of Duke's mayo, which I think complements it perfectly. The chicken in here is so tender and juicy and the Cooper Sharp cheese just melts all throughout this with those little onions all throughout and the perfect roll. I cannot wait to see you guys making these at home. And until next time, I'm Blackstone Betty and I will see you guys in the next video. Go birds.